Hi everyone, it's Fanola Howard and this is Ask Fanola How and it is episode 14. Fantastic. So episode 14 and today's question, which we're really focusing on live questions from live entrepreneurs, real questions from real entrepreneurs. And the focus of this week's uh, Ask Fanola How is this question. I created a product that I know everybody needs, but nobody bought it. What do I do? Okay. And I hear this a lot. And I suppose I want to give you a couple of examples because two as my oops, two of my two entrepreneurs reached out with this question. Okay. And I think my um, tripod is moving. <laughs> Well, there you go, such is life. Anyway, okay, let's focus. Ask Panola How, episode 14, and it's a built a product, but nobody's bought it, okay? So here, using the language of my customer, my entrepreneurs reaching out for help, let me share this with you. Two examples, because I want you to know it's not a one-off, this I'm asked all the time. So here is what they've said. I've created a course in the past that I know everybody needs, but nobody bought. Now I'm creating another mastermind course to see if that will work. I want to listen to the market and hear what they want, and I'm changing the tone of the marketing, but I just seem stuck. First question. Second question was a lot simpler, a lot shorter. I've got a product I believe is good and is valuable, but it's not selling. What do I do? This is such a common challenge for people in their marketing. And let's go through them. Eight things to think about when this face, when you face this, okay? So my first thing for you, and I have to always look at my notes to actually make sure I hit all my points, but the first thing that I want to say to you is, you know, we put a lot of work into our products because our customers mean a lot to us and we really put our all into that. And then when it comes to the marketing, sometimes that we get stuck. So this is common that this will happen. So do not be distressed if this is happening to you. It's kind of part of the course, you know, it's part of how we actually learn and helps us focus on what we need to do. So the first thing that I want to say to you is when this happens, and a really good anchor point to actually really look at this is look at how you're selling or promoting this on your website, because this will anchor all your messaging and anchor all your thinking about the product or service. So my first thing for you to think about is, is your messaging about you or about them? So often we're, and you'll know this from some of the previous Ask Finola Hows because I focus very strongly on purpose and why we're here and our passion and what we're trying to do. So the very first part of your marketing is actually very much focused on you and on what you need and why you're doing it, your why, all of this, it's all about me, me, me. But the minute we move into marketing, the minute we move to messaging, it needs to be all about them. So your first thing to check when something's not selling is, is it, is your marketing, is your messaging all about you or all about them? Are you so concentrated? Are you so focused on making sure you tell them how wonderful you are that you forget to acknowledge their pain or how wonderful they are? So we need to first think about that story, that way that we communicate that it is about a connection point, about connecting with them, understanding who they are, so that we can best serve them. So look at your homepage on your website or the landing page on whatever it is you are offering. Look at it, look at it with, you know, not rose tinted glasses, look at it really clearly as if you were your own customer and say, does this speak to me? Does this speak to me as my own customer? Or am I telling everyone how amazing I am and not actually hearing how amazing they are. So, and I even, I had this conversation something like three or four times yesterday because the habit, the tendency as we come from a build stage in the business, the tendency is to be very focused on ourselves and not to actually focus on them. And they're the people we need to focus on. So your first thing is check that your messaging is about you and not, sorry, <laughs> Check that your messaging is about them and not about you, okay? Check that you've connected with them, that you have, that you can show them that you see them. That's the first point. And I really want you to anchor this step-by-step -step process. Anchor it in your website and use that as the kind of test bed for everything that you're doing, and that will really help. 
And when you crack it on your website, you'll be able to crack it everywhere else, okay? So your first question, is your messaging about them or is it about you, okay? Second thing for you is use their language, not yours, okay? We tend to distill language for ease of use, ease of understanding. So very often our own language and how we process information about where the pain point is for our customer, we actually distill it or we translate it even more and we translate it into terms that we know. So it's like that thing you hear about lingo. We end up distilling their language to process it faster and turn it into our own lingo. So this is where I give you caution again. Make sure that you're using their language. How do they describe the challenge they're facing? Not how you've interpreted what the real problem is. It's how do they, what words, what specific words, what phrases are they using to articulate their pain point, to tell you what's wrong, that they want your help on. And when you listen and you hear that, use that language in your messaging, okay? I'll say it again, use their language, not your language, because you'll tend to lingo, use their language in your messaging. So again, look at your website, you've already checked that you're talking to them, talking about them, and now we want to know, are you using their language? And the reason you want to use their language is you need to show your customers that you see them, that you hear them, that you're listening, and you understand where they are, okay? Really important because that also brings them on that journey of know, like, and trust, pulls them in so that you can connect with them. So they know you're telling them that you hear them, okay? That's number two. Number three, okay? So you've connected, used their language, and the next thing you need to be very, very clear on is, is the message clear? Have you shown them what the transformation will look like when they've bought this thing from you, when they've bought this service or bought this product from you? So have you shown them that if you buy this, this will happen. Your life will look like this when you use this product. Use this product because your life will be so much better. So make it really clear what the result is. Not all the bells and whistles, not all the features, but what their, how their life will be transformed as a direct result of buying this from you. That's what counts because they have a goal, they have a focus of what they want to happen and they want to know that that will happen. So show them how that will happen. Sorry, show them the picture of what that looks like and so that they know what success looks like, success in whatever it is you're helping them with show them that you're delivering that, okay? So making your message clear means that you're showing them what the transformation looks like, that you're, you're showing them how this will work for them and what life will be like once they use your product, okay? Next one. So when you, when you crack that piece, which is really around the messaging area, and if your marketing is still not working yet and you reckon you have cracked it, I'll then come back to you and I'll say, okay, if we've really focused on getting those components of the messaging right, then we need to actually start to ask some really deep questions here. And maybe you should ask them first, but I like to play with messaging first to see that if you're connecting, because that's usually what's going on. But if that doesn't work, my fundamental question for you is twofold. One is, do you have a customer for this product? Do you know who your customer is for this product? Really, really, have you actually spent time profiling who they are, understanding where they are, how you can meet them, what's on their minds, what the challenges are that they faced, where they are, who they are, why they are, when they are, all of these questions. And in a previous um, Ask Finola How, we talked about profiling. So you can just go back to the previous IGTVs or previous recordings and download the customer profiling template. If you don't know who the customer is, then you have no hope of selling to them, okay? That's the next point. Your next one to look at after this is, if you're still not selling at this point, I have to ask, is there a market for your product? Have you verified that there's a market for the product? Easy wins for you here is, 
Are they buying something like this, something to solve this problem from somebody else? Are people making money in this industry? Is there a space for you? So is there a market? Is it saturated? Is it full? Are you different enough? Do you stand out enough? Are you reaching their needs? So verify. So if your message is right and you feel you know your customer well enough, and actually knowing your customer will also tell you if you have a market for this product or not, you have to start to look at, is there a market for this product? Got to get those obvious questions out of the way before you throw the baby out with the bathwater. It's really important. So make sure that you can confidently say, I know there's a market for this product. It's worth this much. I know of 20 people that I could sell to immediately. I know what this problem is. So I know there's a market, okay? All right, when you've got all of that done, you have to answer those questions first, okay? Before you can go even further. So let's say you've got all that out of the way. And you know, I know my customer. I'm now messaging them to them pretty quickly, pretty well. And I also know there's a sufficient market for me to make a living off of this, okay? Next, I kind of think about, all right, you've looked at all of those things and your messaging is right. Well then, have you actually run out of steam? Have you actually run out of steam and not built the engine that it takes to build awareness, to entice them to you, for them to, to consider you as a provider of a service or a provider of a product that will solve their problem? Have you built the marketing engine? So very, very often I see this. I see when someone builds this amazing product that directly addresses a need in the marketplace, that directly addresses the need of a specific customer, and then we really know it's working. And they're just exhausted. They're just exhausted. And they've run out of steam. And they haven't built the way, because we think that the hardest work is in building the product. It's not. The hardest work is actually building the marketing engine. And we have to understand that that marketing engine needs to be built methodically, piece by piece. It's not just a case of saying, hey, my product's here. It's how do I build a journey for my customer to find me, to see me, to consider me, to try me out, to buy, to stay, to buy more, okay? Have you built an engine that takes you through each of these steps? And often this engine is called a marketing funnel or sales and the marketing funnel or a sales funnel. But you do need the engine to reach, to build awareness, to make people aware of what's happening, to make people aware of you and what you can do for them or what your product can do for them. You must have an engine or of course you won't make any sales, okay? So now, next one. Say you have an engine. <laughs> then my next question would be is, have you checked that it works? Have you looked at each point in this process to see what's working because this must be done for everyone. Nobody gets it right first time. And it takes quite a significant amount of time to understand that these are specific steps to be broken down. Like for example, you generate content and get it out there regularly to show people who you are and build awareness and build engagement. You do this all of the time. Are you making sure that you are reaching enough people engaging enough people, test it. Measure each stage and make sure that it tests and does it connect. So say you build lots of awareness and you have created a lead magnet, a downloadable that they can use to help to get a sense of you and what you can do for them. Have you created something that can show them that they can test with you, you know, that they can kind of find out a bit more and warm up to you. Have you created something like that that can help them? Are people downloading that lead magnet? If nobody's downloading the lead magnet, then there's the leak in your engine, the leak in your funnel. You've got to create pieces that work at every step in the funnel and you will not get it right first time. But connect the dots of what's the most obvious thing that will help your customer with their problem that they articulated to you. That must be the prime source for your lead magnet, okay? So, if the lead, does the lead magnet work? Great, loads of people are downloading my lead magnet. 
Fantastic. I've pushed them, pulled them through the stage of my funnel. Now what's happening? Are you talking to them about what the next step is for them? Have you guided them to the next step in this journey of purchasing from you? So what are you doing to tip them over, to entice them to go, you know, I'd like to have a discovery call with this person or I'd like to buy this product now. I'm ready to buy this product. I have all the information I need. I know that, they, that they've got great testimonials. I know the product works. I've tried it out. I've looked at other people. I've seen the testimonial. It, it's time for me to buy. So have you tipped them from consideration to purchase? Have you tested that? So measure it. Like at each point, you want to know if 100 people come in, how many are coming to the next stage so that you can make that next stage better every single time. Do they get to that point? You released the product, you tested the service, it's gone out to them. Have they come back with a testimonial? You need to know that we're creating a loop in this engine so that you can tell other people the successes that you've had with your product or service. So they've bought the product or service from you. Did you take care of that customer? Did you give them a wonderful experience in dealing with you? Was it really easy to work with you? Was it really easy to use this product? Could they unwrap it? Could they stack it on their shelf? What did they need? And did you ask for a testimonial afterwards? Did you ask for a referral afterwards? So that you can start this process again and entice more customers to you. So not only do you have to build the engine, but you constantly have to check that the engine works and make sure that that engine is evolving at each point so that it continues to work and actually expands. Because you know, when you build the engine for the first time, you're gonna have a small amount of people coming through and you need to ramp and scale and ramp and scale as you go, okay? Now, when we do all of this, my last test that I look at to make sure things are really hitting home is, and you possibly should be asking this all along, in fact, I would say ask this all along is, is everything aligned? The reason we start with all, that I started the Ask Finola House series, always starting about purpose and making sure that we know what you're, why you're here, your passion and all of those kinds of things, is to make sure that you start from the very beginning with, your, with the right intent and that everything you do aligns to that. And what I mean by alignment is, it's the right product for the right customer at the right time. And also, the right social media that aligns perfectly in with that. That messaging has, doesn't have to be just good enough on your website. That messaging has to pull them through in your social media, whether it's LinkedIn or Instagram or wherever it is. But making sure that every piece, like it's, this is not always about creativity. Marketing is very much about this interplay, interplay, interchange between creativity and method about process, about being methodical and checking it through. And you need to kind of take a breath at each stage. Often when I see people facing that challenge of marketing is they just go, oh, I hate all marketing because they're just overwhelmed with how much it is. But just do it one step at a time because at each step that you crack, more customers will come. I've just seen it too many times. When you crack the right product for the right customer at the right price, and message it, every time you tweak, you will improve and increase the customer flow. You don't have to wait for perfection. Perfection happens in the process and you will continue to evolve and things become clearer. I even said this to somebody yesterday, clarity comes with action. Every action you take teaches you something else. You've got to keep going. You've got to build that stamina up to keep going and moving through it. So. I want to leave you with a really good statement, okay? And it's, it's kind of anchored in this whole idea of messaging uh, because that's my first three points for you today. So I want to leave you with this thought by a great marketer extraordinaire called Bill Burnback. And he says, you can say the right thing about a product and nobody will listen. You've got to say it in a way that they feel it in their gut or nothing will happen. So we need to move beyond the right things to say, what you should say, and absolutely embrace something that will, they will feel in their gut, okay? That's all I have for you today. This has been Ask Finola How. 
I'm Fanola Howard and this was episode 14 and it was all about how do I, I created a product that I know everybody needs but nobody, nobody buys it. What do I do? Watch it back, ask me questions. I'm here to help. Have a wonderful day.